you believe that tonight? This is the generation of world changers. We are God's change agents in the earth. Come on, say. Say, we can change the world. Come on, say. I want you to get this in your heart tonight. You can do it. You can do it. This is the generation. We're not powerless. We're not without authority. But we're his agents in the earth. Come on, say, we can change. Nothing changes with us. Nothing changes. That's why God said, if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray, seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven. I'll forgive their sin and heal their land. When we get this, the world will change. See, we brought into the mentality that the majority rules, that we can't do anything by ourselves. But we don't live in a democracy, we live in the kingdom. God and us are the majority. Come on, say this. Say, we can change the world. Do you believe it? We can change the world. 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 Oh God, we believe it. We believe it. I believe this. I believe this. If I didn't believe this, why would I be standing up here? There's no reason to keep coming week after week after week and hearing the same thing over and over. If we don't believe that what we get on the inside of us can change the world. If we don't believe it, we should stop coming. One more time. We can change the world. Come on, can you sing it?
not one. Seeing his days are determined, the number of his months are with thee. Thou hast appointed his bounds that he cannot pass. Turn from him that he may rest, till he shall accomplish as an hireling his day. For there is hope for a tree if it be cut down, that it will sprout again, and that the tender branch there will not cease, though the root of there wax old in the earth, and the stock thereof die in the ground. Yet through the scent of water it will bud, and bring forth boughs like a plant. But a man dieth and wasted away, yea, man giveth up the ghosts, and where is he? As waters fall from the sea, and flood decayeth and dryeth up, so man lieth down and riseth not, till the heavens be no more. Oh, that thou wouldst hide me in the grave, that thou wouldst keep me in secret, until thy wrath is past. If a man die, shall he live again? All the days of my appointed time I will wait till my change comes. Thou shalt call and I will answer thee, and thou will have the desire to the work of thine hands. Even in that, you may be seated. Even in that passage of scripture, we see hope. And we want to share with you today that there is hope beyond the grave. Somebody ought to give God some praise because there is hope beyond the grave. We're here to celebrate, and I want to emphasize these two words. We're here to celebrate the life and legacy. Or three words, celebrate life and legacy. We want to celebrate the life because life is not over. I don't know if you believe that, but life does not end here. If you in Christ, life continues. This is a comma in the time continuum. So the life of Miriam, so Dr. Miriam Winters goes on. It doesn't cease. And I don't want to share with you that we also celebrate her legacy. As witnessed by all of you here today, that her life touched people in a positive way. You're such a quiet crowd. I'm saying some good things here. <laughs> I thought I'd get some agreement on that. Her life touched, legacy can be positive or negative. We're here to celebrate a positive legacy, a positive legacy, an impact that, has, that is still bearing fruit in the lives of all those that she touched. That's why we can celebrate. So we're here to do that, and I want to give you those words. In celebration, there can also be tears. As I was sharing with the family back there, we cry at graduations, we cry at births, we cry at uh, weddings, we cry at celebrations. So it's okay to shed tears because that's God's way of healing hearts. I've learned how to cry. Marzan, y'all seen me cry a few times. I've learned how to cry because that's how God heals us. So it's okay to shed tears. And if, I, if you're at my funeral and my kids don't cry, I want two or three people to hit them. <laughs> I want them to have some tears because my life should have some positive, meaningful impact. Am I saying something that will help you today? So we thank God. Let's give God some praise again because he brought us all here. My heart is sad, but I'm also happy because God has crowned another one. Now, some of you will say, let me correct one more thing before we get to the program. Miriam will never be an angel because God's gonna give her a body like his. She not getting no wings, she getting a crown. I don't want no wings, I want a crown. Where he says, well done, thou good and faithful servant. That's what he's gonna say to me and I know he's saying to her, so she don't need no wings. She's around the throne with him. Is that all right? Yeah, yeah. Amen, amen. I'm preaching to myself today. <laughs> we're glad to have, we're gonna have, we're gonna follow the program as the family has put together. We'll have the Old Testament reading by Minister Vinnie. What's your last name, Vinnie? Atkins, yeah. I'm old. Uh, Minister Vinnie Atkins. We'll have a New Testament reading by Minister Dwight um, Williams. And then we'll have a prayer by Minister uh, Emilio Ortega. All right? And then we'll go from there. God bless you. The Lord 
is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me besides the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path, the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thou rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anoint my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Psalms 23. I'll be reading the uh, New Testament uh, scripture uh, out of John 14, John 14, 1 through 6. And it reads as follows. The way, the truth, and the life. It says, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. That where I am, there you may be also. And where I go, you know, and the way you know. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going, and how can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I'm the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. I just read John 14, 1 through 6. May God have a blessing on the reading, hearing of his word. Amen. 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 Please join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, we come to you right now, Lord, asking for your comfort. Your word says in 2 Corinthians that you are the God of all comfort and we need your comfort right now. We need you to comfort us right now as we are grieving the loss of our dear sister, sister, Marion Winters. And we just ask you just to comfort us right now. But Lord, also, we just pray right now that you also help us to, to celebrate. There's a lot of celebration that we can um, call on today because she is a woman of God, that she knew you. She had a personal relationship with you. She had a vibrant relationship with you. She walked and she served you, Lord God. She did all that, um, that you've asked her to do, Lord God. And we just want to celebrate her and celebrate her life. And also, Lord God, we can celebrate right now because we know where she's at. She's with you. Lord, she is with you. She's healed and she is, um, I know, smiling down, Lord God. And we just want to thank you for her life. But Lord, as we say earlier, we just pray for your comfort, Lord God. There's those, a lot of us are, are grieving right now of this loss. But Lord, comfort us, Lord God. You are the God of comforter. So overwhelm us with your comfort today and help us, Lord God. We pray for the service today and the celebration of her life, that we may see you experiencing you, grow closer to you, Lord God. And if there's that someone who does not know you, let this be the day where they encounter you and experience your love for them. We thank you in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Let's celebrate this family right now. Let's celebrate them. Let them know they feel the love from us this morning. Let's celebrate this family. Amen. Our ensemble will lead us in the congregation. will be able to stand, stand with us. And we're going to sing amazing, that hymn of the church, Amazing Grace.
Let's thank God for amazing grace. Let's thank God for his amazing grace. Amen. It can't be a more appropriate song than that covers everybody in this room. It's because of God's grace. Uh, one of my Campbellisms, you know what a Campbellism is, don't you? It's a quote I get from Dr. Campbell. <laughs> he said, I sure thank God for what he has done. But I sure enough thank him for what he has not done because he's not, not dealt with me according to my faults, but he looked beyond all of my faults and has attended to all my needs. That's grace. We thank God for his amazing grace. We will now have acknowledgments by Sister Terry Biffle, followed with resolutions read by Sister Agnes Haynes and Sister Penny Sanders Jones. Good morning, everyone. Morning. My name is Terry Biffle, and I'm going to be doing the acknowledgments, but first I want to tell you that for over 35 years, Miriam was my prayer partner. And it started when I first moved to California, and she was I was in her growth, her growth group with her and Paul. And we have been praying together on and off continuously for over 35 years. I saw Marion as my prayer scholar. Um, when I was teaching the children and I would be teaching something I wasn't sure what I should be teaching, I would call Marion and we'd pray about it. And I want you to know that I'm going to miss my prayer partner because she knows the depths of my soul. When I was getting married, her and I prayed about it. And so I'm, I can't tell you how much having one prayer partner over that amount of time has helped me to be the woman in Christ that I am. So please bear with me. One of the first cards is thinking of you and your family. May your hearts feel the tenderness of God, the caring love of friends, and the cherished comfort of memories. With heartful sympathy and prayers, with love, Robin and Hawatha. Keeping you close in caring thoughts and prayers. Though your heart must hold deep sadness as the loss of the one you loved, may it also hold the blessings of life you shared and the love that always will be a part of you. Praying that God will comfort your heart to the family, uplift your spirit, and carry you through the times of sadness to a place of peace. With deepest sympathy, Tony and Terry Biffle. With deepest sympathy, Marion Winters and family, hoping there is comfort in knowing that you're in so many people's thoughts. May God bless your family. The Bible study group, Frankie Simpson, Pastor Campbell, and Emma Gamblin. And then we have a very special um, acknowledgement coming from Doris. As you know, Doris was a member here for many years. She could not be here today. Um, I think she's really sad about that because, you know, she's called and let us know. But to the family of our God children, Jamin and Sharla, how we wish we could be there with you. I had plans to be with you, but God in his divine wisdom caused it not to be. Marion and I were friends for over 45 years. Our friendship began at the Bible study group we had been assigned to. Yep, me too. We worked and served together in many ministries. Marion was a leader, but not one to push herself forward to be the center of attention. She raised her children in the fear and admonition. Good morning, Brent. If you, if you anything else, she would always be there for you. Sometimes somewhere in my life, I found a very special friend, someone who changed my life by just being a part of it, someone who made me laugh until I couldn't stop, someone who made me feel there really is good in the world, someone who convinced me 
that there is an unlocked door just waiting for me to open. This is a forever friendship. When I was down and the world seemed dark and empty, my forever friend lifted me up in spirit and made that dark and empty world suddenly seem brighter. My forever friend helped me through the hard times. My forever friend helped me through the sad times. My forever friend helped me through the confused time. If I turned and walked away, my forever friend followed me. If I ever lost my way, my forever friend came for me. My forever friend guided and cheered me on. My forever friend held my hand and told me everything was going to be all right. And since God blessed me to find such a friend, I feel happy and complete because I know I don't have to worry. I have a forever friend, and a forever friend has no end. Thanks, sister girl, for being my forever friend. I'm sorry, uh, Dottie Williams, Doris Williams. Giving honor to God, Winter's family. My name is Lee Sanders Stone. I am a member of Bible study. This is a church, just a lovely smile. You know that way she would say, way off, cut her eyes to the side. I always loved the way she did that. I'm going to miss that. But she was always encouraging. She was always encouraging. And um, we will truly miss her, her insightfulness, the joy that she brought, the love that she brought, the encouragement. Uh, she was an amazing woman, an amazing woman. Reading the resolution from the Allen Temple Baptist Church, strengthening our connection to God, each other, and the world, John 15, resolution of respect and loving memory of Dr. Winters. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted, Matthew 5, 4. Whereas in God's sovereignty, the spirit of Dr. Marion Winters has been called from this earthly life to eternity. The pastors, leaders, and members of the Allen Temple Baptist Church extend our heartfelt condolences and join with you in celebrating her life and legacy. Thanks be to God who has removed the sting of death and given us victory over the grave through Christ. Therefore, be it resolved that we commend you to the care of our Lord Jesus Christ. It was Jesus who said, I am the resurrection and the life. He or she that believeth in me, though they were dead, yet, how they live. John eleven twenty five. May you therefore be comforted by many precious memories and by God's promise that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have another building from God, an eternal house in heaven, not built by human hands. Lift up your heads and be not discouraged, for the God we serve is with you, even now and will never leave you nor forsake you. Prayerfully submitted, the 19th day of April, 2024. Uh, J. Thompson, senior pastor. J. Alfred Smith, senior pastor emeritus. It's a privilege for me. I met Terry at Costco in Mountain View, 
and we formed a friend. I have a feeling that whenever I was called at the last minute to do something, that Mary, the reason, say, call Agnes, she can do it. And so I'm grateful to her for the, because she made me grow. She, uh, I was privileged to pray with her before she went into the hospital. And uh, I'm grateful that she was my friend. Resolution from the Mount Zion that thou shalt guide me with thy counsel and afterward receive me to glory. Whereas it has pleased our Heavenly Father to translate our dear sister Mary and Winters from the labors of this life into the sweet rest of the saints in heaven. And whereas the pastor offices and members of the Mount Zion Baptist Church share in the lost noble worker and Christian servant, served our congregation willingly in our own creative inspiring. Most notably, we remember her service as creator and administrator of rope for young girls, director of faith at home, director of women's fellowship, Sunday school for the women's club, and, the and as a facility, served our congregation wherever and whenever needed. All of us. Therefore, it resolved that we express our gratitude to God, allowing life to long time and to bless sweet and fragrant growth. Be it also felt in our simple family, remind death, hope, Christian action. All the glory. They are three steps to heaven out of self, in Christ, glory. Sister Winners has taken that final heaven. Encourage the after life fell for the man. It further resolved. Copy. Copy. Sorrowfully, Dr. Fred Amen. Those are great words of resolve. Be it resolved. That means we are all in agreement. Is that right? We're all in agreement that those words are true. We'll now have a selection by our Mount Zion Ensemble. My light in 
darkness Oh, God, God, God is He's my all and all joy in a time of sorrow you, but I'm so glad that God is. He's the source and the strength of my life. And because he is, Dr. Marion Yvonne Winters is not a was. 
She's a is. While she may be not here, she's present. And we're thankful to God for that. Give God another praise. I don't know about you. I get happy just thinking about that. Amen. We now have uh, academic achievement reflections by Sister Melinda Hughes. She will come with academic reflections. We'll be back because we need to give some instructions on the next part. Amen. This is really hard for me. Um, my name is Dr. Melinda. If Dr. Winters was here, she would make me introduce myself as Dr. Melinda Hughes. She said, yes, she said we work too hard for those degrees to keep them undercover. Dr. Winters, I met her 25 years ago at De Anza College. I was a new counselor there, new faculty member there. And the dean at that time, uh, the dean of counseling was Dr. Richard Rose. So when I came into my office, just being new in academics, uh, he took me, he said, I want you to meet somebody. So he took me to Dr. Winter's office. She had an office in the parking lot way a long time ago. And she he, he took me there and he said, uh, Dr. Winters, this is Melinda. I didn't have a, a doctor degree then. And she, he said, this is Melinda and I want you to take her under your wings. And she did. Marion was not only my friend, she was, a, she was my mentor, she was a colleague, and she was just an all-around good person. And I just, um, I just miss her so. She was my travel buddy. We went to uh, Rome together, went to Puerto Rico, and can't tell nobody about that, you know? And We just had just a lovely time. She was a great. All right. Maybe you should tell that story. Uh, well, I was trying to move <laughs> on, you know. <laughs> you know. <laughs> but anyhow, I'm just going to jump. <laughs> but I just thank God for her and just thank God for her friendship all down through the years. She has been definitely a friend of mine. And it's so hard to find good friends. And she was a good friend. So I just, I just thank her. And I thank Charla and the family praying for you. Um, I do want De Anza College to stand. If you work for De Anza, still working for De Anza, please stand up. <laughs> thank, thank you. I'm going to read, I put together what I can about um, Dr. Winters and her time at De Anza College, and I'm quite sure there's a lot more that she did because she pretty much ran the campus, if you don't know, you know. It was the president and then it was Dr. Um, Winters. So, you know, if you wanted something done, you could actually go to her and get it, get it done. You want a bill pass and uh, uh, initiative, go talk to her because she was the person that was going to make it happen. So just kind of bear with me at this moment. Um, Dr. Winters, a remarkable woman who's, whose impact on De Anza College uh, campus was profound. Dr. Winters was a pillar of strength, compassion, advocacy during her tenure from 1990 to 2009, leaving behind an indelible mark on all those she encountered. Dr. Winters wore many hats during her time at De Anza College, each one um, representative of her unwavering commitment to our students and the pursuit of equity and excellence in education. Among her many roles, Dr. Winters served as the director of the STARS program, Students Transfer Academic and Retention for Services. Through her leadership, the STARS program flourished, providing invaluable support and resources to countless students striving for academic excellence. In addition to her role as director of the STARS program, Dr. Winters served as a dedicated counselor offering guidance, encouragement, and support to students facing personal and academic challenges. Her, her compassion and empathy touched the lives of, of, all, of, of all who sought her guidance. Dr. Winters also served as, served as the director of the Office of Equity, where she worked tirelessly to promote diversity, inclusion, and social justice on our campus. Her leadership and advocacy were instrumental in creating a more inclusive learning environment for all members of our community. Furthermore, Dr. Winter shared her knowledge 
and wisdom as an instructor for the women of color class, inspiring many students to explore issues of identity, intersectionality, and empowerment. Her passion for education and social justice was evident in every lesson she taught. Beyond her professional role, Dr. Winters was a dedicated member of numerous campus committees, including but not limited to the Black Faculty Staff and Administrators Network, BFSA, the Multicultural Faculty Association, and the Diversity Council, where she lent her expertise and leadership to important initiatives and decisions that shaped the direction of our college. Dr. Winters was not only a leader, but a devoted mentor, particularly to the new faculty of color. She recognized the importance of providing guidance and support to those navigating academia. And her mentorship has touched the lives of many inspiring educators. Most importantly, Dr. Winters' deep faith and commitment to Christian principles were evident in everything she did. Her compassion, kindness, and unwavering dedication to serving others were a testament to the values she, she held dear. As we reflect on Dr. Winters' legacy, let us be inspired by her example of living out her faith in action, whether she was advocating for equity and inclusion, mentoring colleagues and students, or leading with integrity. Dr. Winters' spirituality was the guiding force behind her words and deeds. In this time of mourning, we may find solace in the knowledge that Dr. Winter's spirit lives on in the countless lives she touched and enduring impact of her work. Thank you. Amen. Wonderful, wonderful tribute, academic, social, and spiritual. Working with the total human. Isn't that all right? The totality of who or what a person is. Now we're at the point where it says reflections, families and friends. Now all of us can't speak. Um, and we do have to be somewhere at a certain time. But if you don't get a chance to say anything now, the phone works, email works. Um, so whether other mediums we have work, you can, family need not only hear what you have to say today, but it doesn't end that what they're going through and what they struggle with and the encouragement they need does not stop here today. So we, we just hear, and let me give you an example. It says two minutes, two minutes. Here's how it would go. I'm so glad I met Dr. Winters. She had a profound impact on me. She couldn't say, nobody could say, Brother Cleve, like she could say Brother Cleve. She inspired me to continue on in education. She was a great teacher, a great leader, and a foundational member from the time I was here at Mount Zion. I love her, love the family, Mother Ben, Jackie, and all them, they became family. God bless her, we love you. Family, we love you. Example of, that was less than two minutes. So, I don't wanna have to get up and play police officer. I retired from probation 17 years ago. I still know how to do that. So you come, and we may have to limit it depending on the time. So we wanna leave word for the word. Uh, uh, Dr. Campbell is special to her, so we want to make sure he has his time. If you have some, line up on this side uh, and come up and say, we remember, two minutes, strictly two minutes. Is that all right? Can we work together? Amen. If you have some words, don't hesitate. If I stand up, that's the 30-second warning, all right? <laughs> Good morning. How are you? Yeah. My name is Dr. Adrian King, and I met Marion when I started my doctoral program at USF. Um, she became a matriarch of a phenomenal group of black women um, during a period of about five to six years. There were I don't know, guys, help me, how many, how many, at least 10, 15 phenomenal currents at USF, and we all became this wonderful group, and Marion was our matriarch. She told us what to do, she told us how to study, she told us we couldn't get up, give up, and this was all during the time when she was juggling a full-time job 
her husband, her family, and all of the other activities that she was involved with. So um, I just want to tell you that they say, by their fruits shall they be known. And she did not just have fruits amongst the, the people here in this, in this community, but in a wider spectrum, um, this is a representation, stand up ladies, of doctors who went through the, pro the program with Marion. I, will, I love her, I love you, Sharla. Jamin, I don't know if you remember me. How are you, sweetheart? And Momar, I saw all kinds of pictures, never got to meet you, but your mother was extremely close to me, and we will all miss her. Um, thank you. Marion was one of my newest best friends. I have known her for many years, but the Lord placed us together about six years ago when I stopped driving at the age of 90. We both were attending Bible study fellowship on Wednesday mornings. We were on our summer break, and it just so happened that she and her mother were having lunch at Sizzlers, and so was I. She asked me, are you going back to Bible Study Fellowship this year? And I said, no, I've stopped because I'm not driving anymore. And just an afterthought, I said, unless you're gonna pick me up. <laughs> she, said, she said, I would love to pick you up, Sister Grant, but you live in Palo Alto, and I live <laughs> I live in Redwood City. I said, oh no, I only live about three blocks from you. So from then on, she would pick me up every Wednesday morning for class. And we became, our friendship developed into a um, prayer partner. She would call me every Thursday evening, or I would call her on Friday with our updates and our prayers. I certainly will miss you. Uh, Marion, but I'll see you later. Marion was a very good friend. We knew her when she was young. The, one of my fondest memories when, if you knew Marion's mother and her sisters, in the 60s, they were the fashionistas of Mount Zion. Mary always drove a Cadillac. Mary and Jackie were the sharpest youth in the church. Even I remember them singing in the youth choir, and I was in the junior choir, but they were always well known because they are easy to love people. Marion was one of the favorite Bible study teachers here at Mount Zion, and she was so good, I always say she was commentary worthy because she prepared. She never came unprepared. Her comments were always on point. And she was so good that the other teachers would ask her for advice while teaching the lesson. Now, that's a good teacher. Everything, even on our Tuesday Bible studies, it's a very casual atmosphere. But Marion always drove it home. No matter how good we prepared, Marion always kind of had the final word. <laughs> because you knew when she opened her mouth, it was going to be great. She raised her children in the Lord. She loved her children fiercely. I remember once going over, Momar had got in trouble. <laughs> and his punishment was he had to read a book <laughs> and write Marion a book report. The book was Tom and Jerry, the cat and the rat from the cartoon. <laughs> she made <laughs> Momar read that book and write her a two-page report. <laughs> you know what? Momar did it. <laughs> I remember when Charlotte came, Jamin would hold her hand and say, this is my sister. And he would hold her hand and bring her in church, and Marion would stand back and smile. She's going to be missed. But if there was a person prepared to meet God, it was Marion Winters.
morning. I am um, Linnell Johnson. I've known Marion so long that I cannot remember meeting her. That's how long you know you long, you've known somebody. Um, there's so many things I could say, but I'm going to focus on one thing. Marion uh, was a great disciple. She, she took her job um, discipling Christians very serious. One thing about good, a good disciple, you may come in as a baby, but she ain't going to leave you there. You're not going to be a babe in Christ forever. You will grow up. She will make you grow up. And one thing about her, Jesus was her Lord and Savior, and she wasn't backing down. If you don't agree with her, you don't agree with her, but she wasn't backing down. So I remember her for a lot of reasons, but that's the one that's going to stick in my head. I remember um, going by her house a couple of days after she passed away because I, I sold her that house, the big house on the corner that everybody knows, on the corner of Middlefield and um, uh, Woodside, going to Costco. So I turned the corner, I looked over, and I saw a house, and I lost it. I just lost it. I pulled into um, Costco, and on my car, I play a gospel station, KBLX3, called Praise in the Bay, and they play gospel music all day long. Um, after I pulled in, the song came on was Heaven. Heaven is where I want to be. Willing to die for heaven is where I want to be. So she's telling us, come on. She's probably there now saying, it's better than y'all can imagine. It's better than you can imagine. Uh, a couple of weeks or so ago, we had a big thing of the uh, uh, eclipse. The eclipse and the sun blocked the moon or the moon blocked the sun. Either way, it went dark. Marion wasn't an eclipse. She was a comet. A comet goes through the sky and there's a tail behind. She's the comment, and we're the tail. We just follow him behind, follow him behind, follow him behind. And she's saying, come on. You want to go with me? Come. I'm going to heaven. Y'all better come. So that's what I want to leave. That's what she's left with me. And to the family, very quickly, grief has no time. You take as long as you need. Uh, don't, tell, don't let anybody tell you to get over it. You don't get over it. You learn to live with it, but you don't get over it. So... She wouldn't be happy if you're sitting down crying 24-7. That's not who she was. But follow the comment. Amen. We'll have uh, the next two, and then we will have to move on. So the next two, and that will be it. Um, everybody say something. Shout something at me. One, two, three. Amen. Everybody has said something. Amen. Good morning, I'm um, Frankie Simpson. Uh, Marion called on me. Um, she taught Sunday school every Sunday morning, the women's class, and she said, I need a break. You know, you need to come and, and help. I'm like, huh, I don't know if I can do that. So yeah, so I started helping her. And then um, when COVID-19, Minister um, Dwight Williams said, we have worship service, but we don't need to let Sunday school go. So he said, we need to have Sunday school. So they got on the phone, and they start calling around for us to rotate every other Sunday. So Mary and I said, no, we're not doing it. Let the men handle it. We are not doing it. Okay, no, we don't want to do it. But Kearney kept after us, and finally we said, okay, we'll do it. So we started teaching, um, doing the, the course. And so it got to the point where we started. I started laughing at both of us, because when it was our turn to teach, we couldn't stop. Oh, it's my turn. It's my turn to teach. I, I don't want to be sick. I'm, I want to teach. I want, I want to be there to teach my turn. And so Marion was such um, an inspiration to all of us. Um, we're going to miss her um, so much. And we just thank God for the time that he gave us. If, if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you say your goodbyes to Marion now. But I'm going to see her because I know the Lord and she knew the Lord. So this is not goodbye. It's just a, well, it could be a short goodbye, but you know what I mean. <laughs> anyway, we, lo we, we love her. And one of the things that I learned was this from uh, Max Lucado's book. And he said, uh, we know Mary, and we thought that she was just getting over a cold. But Max said, why do we try to hold on to the very things in life that give us grief? And her body was starting to give her grief, so God took her. So we thank the Lord for all the messages and, 
and the teaching that she had done. I want to give honor to God, my pastor, our congregation here at Mount Zion, and all the family and friends here today to celebrate the life of Sister Mary White Winters. My wife and I started coming here in 2012, and we started coming just visiting because my cousin introduced me to his church, and he said it's something that it can do to change my wife and my life. And as I started coming here, I started to see that Sister Mary White Winters, she had an AKA. She had key change, because I'm a brother of Alpha Phi Alpha, so I was intrigued by that. And, and from there, we, I would always talk to her, and Sister Mary My Winters took me under, underneath my wing. She became my prayer partner for over six years. She actually taught me good, good doctrine to be able to study the Bible, to apply the Bible, but also to apply it to my life for me to be the man that I am today. So I appreciate Sister Mary Y Mary Winters, because she made an impact in so many lives that I'm witnessing today, but I never forget when I would, we would have our prayer interactions, when we have our prayer calls, I would call her and I would say, well, how would you want me to address you? Mary White Winters or Dr. Mary White Winters? She said, address me as Dr. My, Dr. Mary White Winters because I paid that money. And I had the opportunity to get to know you, Mamar, from a distance. You, Jamin, you, Charlotte, and your mom loved you. She loved you so much, as well as you, Jackie. And she will always tell me, there's nothing you can do without our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So I just want to employ you all. Her life still lives within you. And remember, there's nothing you can do without our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you. Hello, hello. My name is Juan. Uh, I'm her adopted son. <laughs> but I just want to say, Mama, I miss you. You're with my Lord and with my grandma. I'll see you later. Sit down. <laughs> Love you, Mommy. Amen. Amen. God bless you, man. God bless you. Oh, man. I did not want to be back here. <clears throat> We were just here, yeah, yeah, putting grandma to rest. The only sauce that I have is that m my mom, she's now with her bestie. They were thick as thieves. All the women in the family were connected. They all talked about things that I didn't know about till three weeks later. Um, some of those things were me. Uh, they make decisions without me knowing. That's all right. That's all right. You know, you guys handled it. Um, but I just want to say I love you, Mom. Um, man, to see all you, the impact that you've uh, given to everybody and spread throughout the Bay Area. Um, I don't know if you know this. Her, her name for, for a second in East Palo Alto was Azima. Um, she gave me the name uh, Momar Yusuf Clemens. Her husband at the time, his name was Hikimu. They ditched those African names. I was stuck with it. That's fine. Um, <laughs> And uh, she was just a great woman. Um, she gave me the strength to be able to even stand up here now and to joke and laugh and talk about things in, in such a way because she'd always tell me that God is, 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 the, is the buck stop. That's where the, the buck stops there with him. So at this point, um, we know she's at home. And unfortunately, I intuited that I felt once grandma left that she was gonna leave but she took care of grandma's, all of her estates, everything, she wrapped everything up like a nice little bow. Now it's our turn, you guys. I know that we've gone through a lot, family, but we ain't gonna let her down, all right? Amen. Amen. Yeah. And I need, I need to hear a promise. And I'm making a promise to you guys, and I wanna hear that promise back that we're gonna, we're gonna keep her legacy alive, all right? Amen. God bless you, come on now. Amen, bless you, man. Let's give God some praise, let's give God some praise. Yes, yes. Um, um, Charles Norris sent a message. Sorry I could not be there, but I want to thank Dr. Winters for her support, love for my ministry. She was a constant supporter on all my mission trips. So we thank for the God for all the reflections. They have encouraged our hearts. Now we'll have the reading of the obituary by Sister 
Charlene Hardy. Good morning. The obituary for Dr. Marion Yvonne Winters. Marion Yvonne Winters was born on December 9, 1946, in San Francisco, California, to Ernest Edward Reed and Mary Sue Reed. Marion gave her life to Christ at an early age and served the Lord faithfully until the end. She received her early education in Menlo Park, California. She graduated from Menlo Atherton High School and received her undergraduate degree from San Jose State University. Marion married Robert Clemens, and to this union, one child was born who just left the state, Momar. She later married Paul Winters, and to this union, she had more children, Corey, Jamin, Charla. She received her master's degree in clinical psychology from San Francisco State University. Marion later obtained her doctor of philosophy degree in education from the University of San Francisco. She was a counselor at Mount, Mountain View High School and Los Altos High School. She taught at Nairobi College and De Anza College. She retired as the Director of Diversity at De Anza College. Marion was very active at Mount Zion and was a favorite Bible study facilitator and Sunday school teacher for several classes. She was also the leader of the women's ministry and founder of ROPE. And ROPE is an acronym, but it's the right of passage to excellence for girls. She served as the director of faith at home. Additionally, she was the director of the Vacation Bible School and a Christian counselor to many. She also helped organize the Mount Zion College Fair and she also helped me with being the director, and she was the assistant director of the Joyce Elaine Campbell, our Mount Zion College Fund. Marion was deeply loved and respected because she lived a life that made it easy to love her. She will be sorely missed, and I'll say that again, sorely missed by all the lives she touched. She leaves to mourn her passing, one sister, Jackie Reed, of Menlo Park, and four children, Corey of San Antonio, Texas, Momar of Atlanta, Georgia, Jamin of Redwood City, California, and Sharla of Raleigh, North Carolina. Four grandchildren, Colin, Cameron, and Caleb of Raleigh, North Carolina, and Violet of Brooklyn, New York. One niece, Maisha, Reed of Miami, Florida, and her honorary sister, Val Harris of Menlo Park, California. She also leaves a host of relatives, including the Winters family of San Antonio, Texas, the Reed family of Texas and California, and many friends. To God be the glory for the life of Marion in God. Now we'll have a, a solo by uh, Deacon Gilbert Simpson. Following that solo, you will hear 
from Dr. Fred Campbell, who not only was pastor but friend and relative. I want to say this in, in closing. Dr. Campbell related to me something that touched me deeply. During Sister Miriam's last days, she was at the hospital, and this stays with me because so many of us are afraid of death. But she asked everybody to leave the room so she could focus on going home to God. That's assurance. That's assurance. There's no fear when you know who you're with. Let's give God some more praise for the life of Dr. Marion Winters. Let the church say amen. First, give an honor to God, who is the head of my life, to our pastor, and to each and every one of you who are here to celebrate this home going for Marion Winters. Now I know what faith at home is like. We're all family. And God says he blesses us one by one. Um, to Jamin, Marion, believe me, although Jam Marion was small in stature, she had a little streak on her. She said, Jamin, whenever he did in trouble, she would be on him. Then she'd call me. <laughs> Come get him. But it was a blessing to work with Jamin, and he did all the work with me as far as doing the upgrading of homes and painting homes and stuff like that. But she will be missed to the point of the family at home and her our growth group and teaching. She was a great teacher. She really was. Jesus, you're the center of my joy. And all that's good and perfect comes from you. You're the heart of my contentment, hope for all that I do. Jesus, you're the center of my joy. When I've lost my direction, you're the comfort for my way. You're the fiery light when nights are long and cold. In sadness, you are the laughter that shadows all my dreams. When I'm all alone, your hand is there. Good and perfect comes from 
with divine resolve I watched her as she chose to meet God alone In that moment of transition, over the waste of some near fifty seven years, I have been in that place. of watching those I have shepherd, shepherded for years to enter that zone of death. But I've never 
seen one other than Jesus, perhaps, who died with control. Unable to articulate, but I watched her love. I watched her summons and direct. And I watched her meet death. not as a victim, but as a victor. All right, all right. Therefore, for your sake and mine, I want to talk to death. Right. Oh, death. Where is thy sting? O oh, death, where is thy victory? I want to personify death. Because he has misrepresented himself, death. He is not a dead end street. Death is not annihilation, but separation. He does not have the last word. Death thinks he is the end, but he he is not. Yeah, yeah. He fools man because he thinks because he is finality that men and women could live as Epicureans recklessly and unaccountable for life. I want to talk to death. Because death will make you think that there's no future after him. Death wants you to think that he is king and that you must bow down to him. He wants you to believe the untruth of God. That God planned death. He wants you to think that death is natural. All men must die. But I want to talk back to him this afternoon and let him know that death is not of 
God. Death interrupted what God had for mankind. I want death to know that like Adam, humanity chooses to die. We select death. Adam was created our forebearer to live with God forever. But he chose, Adam did, to become autonomous and to to live an independent life. He chose to become an adult in God's house. He chose to attempt to rival God and himself become God. God had told him that the day you disobey, the day that you become independent, the day you become full of yourself, you will die. Death would not be annihilation but death would be separation. He warned him the day you eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil that you would be separated from me. And that is the essence of death. We need to know, and I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you come to celebrate this woman who chose life. Yes. Yes. Because there's someone in this place because they have been duped by death think that death is the close of life the end of existence And there's no encore. There's no future after it. Death wants you to realize that. And death wants you to realize that since death is just physical, That death can be a hiding place from the enigmas of life, the vicissitudes of life, the pain of life. So we choose death. Set before you is the two options. Life or death. Right. Dr. Winters said with gusto, for me to live is Christ. Yeah. And to die is a plus. I want to use this saint 
who was not perfect, but she trusted the one who is the author of life. Yes. Listen at him in his autobiography. I am the way Jesus talking. I am the center of veracity, truth, and I am the light. God, I'm going to miss her. Uh, she's going to be hard to replace. Yeah. What a mother. She loved you, God. What a sister, Jackie. What a daughter she was. And I do not use past tenseness in the sense of finality. But I use was in continuum not in past tense. But she's not here any longer. So I speak in the past tense. I'm going to miss her. The church, the city, the Anza, the sorority, the Bible studies, We'll miss her. She's unable to be replaced. But she chose the best thing. Out of all the things she could choose, she chose to embrace the one who is the author and finish it. She gave her life to the life-giving king. All right. That took the sting out of death and robbed the grave of its victory. She knew that it was more to this homo sapien than what we could physically see. She knew him. Not about him. She knew him. Not merely intellectually. She knew him. She had an epistemology. For I know that my Redeemer liveth and that he shall stand upon the latter day upon the earth. And though this skin worms destroy this body with lung cancer, with diabetes, with, 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 with one thing or another, she knew that this was not her finality. Yeah. So with gusto, with, with striding steps, with, with her head raised up, she said, and come on, death. Mm-hmm. She welcomed death. Yes, 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 yes. She was ready for death. She, she looked forward to death. The grim reaper was not grim for her, but it was a light in the window as she approached that territory of death. I believe she saw a light in the window. Yeah. On the other side, saying, well done, thy good and faithful servant. Come up higher, I'll make you rulers of men. Because he, Jesus, took the sting. Oh, 
death. Where is your sting? Death had to announce Jesus took the sting. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him and by his stripes There is healing in the atonement. Hallelujah. By his stripes. She's healed this morning. Oh, y'all listening. By his stripes. She's healed this morning. She's not done with. It's not all over. Yes, I have a tear in my eyes and a brokenness in my heart, but I am in paradoxum. All right, all right. I am in an ambiguous situation. I'm sad, but I'm glad. My head is bowed, but my spirit is lifted up. Free at last. Free at last. I watched to try to breathe. I watched to try to walk. But free at last. Thank God Almighty. Thank God. Old death and all your cohorts. Cancer, diabetes, strokes, heart attacks. By his strikes. Yes. There's no more. She's in the land, not this part of her, of the no more. I rejoice. I rejoice. I rejoice in the fact that absent from this frame, present with the Lord, Our Savior dignified humanity. Jesus. Not Buddha, Nanak, nor Confucius. Jesus. Uh Dignified humanity by becoming humanity. And then dying in the place of humanity. And then rising from the grave in humanity. Making the grave a safe place for bodily resurrection. And he got up early Sunday morning saying to Mary and and all of us that death will not have the last word. Oh, death. death. Where is thy sting? Oh, grave. Holmes, Jordan. Stormy banks I stand and cast a wishful eye to Canaan's fair and happy land where my possessions lie. All right, yes. Yeah. I am bound for the promised land. I am bound for the promised land. Oh, who will go and stand with me? I am bound for the promise. I am bound for the promise land. I am bound for the promise land. and go with me I am bound for the promised land 
there is an invitation. We thank Dr. Marion Winters for bringing you all here this morning, that you came to honor her life, but she still speaks. Her life still speaks. That lets you know her life is not over. And she invites you to know the same God that she knows. I didn't say knew, that she knows. She invites you by her life, by her words, by her action, and by her testimony that death does not have to have a sting for you. We thank God for the word. Give God some praise for his word this morning. Are you encouraged today? Are you encouraged today? Are you encouraged today? I have been blessed. I'm thankful to Dr. Winters that she blessed me in the present and now even in this moment, I still feel blessed by knowing her. Let's give God some praise for her life this morning. Amen. 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 Dr. Campbell, thank you for those. You know, it's too often we, we need to learn to speak from the heart, don't we? And he preached from the heart, and it will testify to your heart. We thank God for you. If you don't know him, we invite you to know him. We can share with you how to get to know him. No magic formula, no hocus pocus. Just opening your hearts and saying, Lord, come in and take my life. Mold my life. I want that same testimony where I can face death, not with fear, but with victory. Amen. Are we going to have a final viewing? No, no final view. We're going to recess out. We're going to be meeting at Skylon Cemetery for the committal. If you want to go, you will follow us. Ministers, follow me down. Call the morticians in, please. We're thankful to God uh, when we all get to heaven.
If your car is blocking the hearse, we need you to move your car so the hearse can leave for the cemetery.